For some people, Halloween, is a holiday season of two days, at most. For them, there is Halloween Eve, and Halloween Day. But for some people, every day, is a sort of Halloween. Such is the case in this edition of Short Story Theatre, by Bill Russo. We present a tale of a man who lives the life of Halloween every single day. But for him, it's not a happy chore. Now with today's edition of our verbal broadsheet, here is your presenter. The tradition of cutting faces into pumpkins originated in America, probably around Boston or New York. But the first carving, was actually in Ireland, and it was a large turnip, not a pumpkin that was hollowed out, had a face cut into it, and was supplied, with a candle to give it a scary glow. According to the legend a mean and sorderly fellow named Jack, who lived in a Dublin shack, loved to play tricks on unsuspecting people. His foul antics affected everyone, from his own family to the town's upper class. He took great delight in tripping old ladies suspending wires across pathways to injure human and horse alike, and tying a thread around a gold piece, that he tossed on the ground, and then snatched it away, from a person who spotted it, and went to pick it up. Though a rogue and a no-good, mean Jack was very skilled, in the art of doing bad things, and always managed to escape harm, from his foul tricks, even when he pulled one, on the devil himself. By means of his extraordinary cunning, he managed to convince Satan, to climb up a full-grown apple tree. When the Lord of Hell was halfway up, Nimble Jack tacked crosses, all around the trunk of the tree. I can't get down, moaned the devil. I'll suffer eternally, if I even so much as brush across one of those terrible crosses. Take them away Jack, begged old Satan. I might remove those crosses, for you if you are, in a bargaining mood. Name your price, you scallywag. Jack smiled and thrust out his chest, puffing himself up as big as he could get and told the devil, the price for me to do it is one soul, my own. You must promise me that when I die you will not claim my soul. Take away those dreaded crosses, and it's done. I shall never lay claim your dark soul, no matter what. Keeping his end of the bargain, Jack removed the crosses and the devil climbed down the apple tree and went to hell, while Jack went to the pub, to celebrate his big victory over the Lord of Darkness. About twenty years later, after a life of deceit, and drunken debauchery, Jack died, and applied for a small apartment, in heaven. At the pearly gates, St. Pete took one look at the old reprobate, and said not a chance. No way. There's no place for the likes of you, in heaven Jack. Go to hell. So Jack did. He knocked on the door of the gates to the inferno, and was met by Satan himself who demanded to know, what the hell do you want Jack? I'd like a little spot in hell. It doesn't have to be very big. Really, even a little closet will do. We made a bargain Jack. I promise that I would never claim your soul, no matter what. I'm keeping my end of the deal. Get lost Jack. Yes it's lost I'll be, said the miserable old sinner, for now I'm stuck forever in the dark nether world between heaven and hell, and I can't even see where I'm wandering. I'll do one thing for you Jack. Here, said the devil as he tossed him a flaming ember, from the furnace of hell. That ember will glow forever, and guide you on your endless walk, between the gates of heaven and hell. Jack had a turnip with him, a plentiful and favored food in Ireland at the time. It was a large turnip, and Jack felt that it would make a good holder, for his flaming ember, which was too hot to hold in his hand. Jack hollowed out the turnip, and cut holes in the side. When he placed the ember inside, the light from it shined through the holes and lit the way for him, in his perpetual walk. The last thing new souls arriving at the gates of heaven and hell see before they are admitted to one place or the other, is a mean-spirited man carrying a brightly lit jack-o'-lantern, and so it was that during the first great waves of immigration, the Irish brought the tradition of turnip carving to America, that once they got here and discovered pumpkins, they stopped using turnips because pumpkins were bigger and easier to carve. And so closes, the story of the first, Halloween, jack-o'-lantern. When it comes time, for me to leave this earth, I wonder if the first thing I'll see in the afterlife, will be mean old Jack and his turnip, with its blazing eyes and mouth. I wonder, but I'm in no hurry to find out, and dear listener, I suspect you feel, the same way. That's all for today in Short Story Theatre, written by Amazon Kindle author, Bill Russo. Please share our stories, if you like them, and come back again real soon. Won't you?